Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name is Eileen and this is Zarbo Audio Projects. Today I'm going to show you the process of putting together the crossovers for the Aviatrix speaker kit from Parts Express. I do have a little help from Tom here and there, but as you will see, I did lay out, glue together and solder an entire crossover board myself. I did it. So sit back, relax and enjoy. All right, so the cabinets are uh, assembled, glued up, sanded, primed and painted, and they look fantastic. Nice job, sweetie. Yeah, thank you. I think they came out good. Yeah, they really did. And now, see, we can't just stick a tweeter and a couple of woofers in there uh, and just connect all the wires. We have to have a crossover. And with this kit, the Aviatrix kit, comes this little white box that has all the crossover components in it. So these are all the components for one speaker. I got the other set in here. But we're going to do one at a time to make our life easy. In this box also is a is a little card with a QR code on it. And if you scan that with your phone, it takes you to the Parts Express website and specifically to the area where they sell the kits. So if you click on, uh, scroll down to the Aviatrix kit, which is what this is, or whatever your kit happens to be. But in this case, it's the Aviatrix kit. Scroll down to that, click on um, manuals and resources. And then you can scroll down to the PDF for the Aviatrix speaker crossover, which is what this is. I printed it out. I'm not good at working on things digitally. I need things printed out and it's just easy to see for me. So we've got it, everything laid out here. And what this is, is there are symbols for each uh, component. Like a capacitor is, is two lines that aren't quite touching for the capacitors. The inductors, you already know what this is. Okay, are the coil, yeah. The coils, the yeah. inductors, that's a little coil looking right. thing. Right, and then the resistors. That's just a rectangle. Okay. Yeah. So. This tells us what all the parts are and how they need to connect for the woofers and for the tweeters. So let's just sort of take the pieces and try to piece them together into a conglomerate to see what we're actually looking at here. Don't worry, we're not about to show you the process of laying the entire crossover out in real time, but what we're trying to do here is to basically go over the schematic and lay the physical pieces of the crossover out in such a way that it mimics the schematic drawing. We're doing that here for the tweeter first. Then we're going to do the same thing for the woofer section next. Doing them separately sort of helps keep things organized a little better. So basically, once we get all these pieces arranged similar to the schematic, we're going to start to move and rotate the various pieces around, trying to keep them close enough together so that the wires can still touch. Now, there is something that we have to say about getting things close. You want the crossover to be tidy and compact, but this coil and this coil will interact. If they're too close, they'll interact in a negative way. What you don't want is you don't want to be able to look through the donut hole of a coil and see another coil. Okay, that's a no-no. Yeah, so all of this stuff here is going to have to get arranged in such a way that this coil isn't real close to this coil. Okay. So whatever size board we're going to use, we're going to keep this coil to one end, this coil is going to be at the other end just keeping this arrangement physically in the in a similar vicinity as, as it is we see that we can turn this this way we can turn this this way we can turn this this way and pretty much the leads will be able to touch each other without needing to be jumpered with the extra lines we call this point to point point to point means that each point of the end of a component touches another component without needing to have a jumper line of extra wire. Okay. So okay. this is going to make a package something like this. Right. Just roughly. Okay. Now we can get this over here and as you can see this coil and this coil is uh, just how we have it here. It's about, Let's see. There's a about good four five. inches okay. Okay. between the edge of this and the edge of this. Okay. It's about four inches there. And that, that's however acceptable. You want to do. Four that's, inches. that's acceptable. Okay. Here. And uh, this, this chart here that I'll put on the screen it kind of tells you, it's been floating around the internet for a while, but it's been updated to include uh, uh, laminate core inductors, but it kind of shows you how you should and should not okay. arrange inductors so that they don't interact with each other. Because what happens is if they get too close, it changes the value of one or both, both actually, and it's not going to work the way that it's intended. Right. So distance is best. But So now we, we've got the woofer crossovers are basically this chunk, the tweeter crossovers are basically this chunk. We can get them about that close. Now we got to see, like, what space do we have inside of the box? Yeah. So let's see. Let's see how much space we have. 
So that looks like nine. That's nine inches. Nine inches. So we got nine inches from the back inside of the box to the inside of the front. Oh, but with the woofer in there, it's right. going to be a smaller. Um, we have less space. Yeah, You're right. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So let's put this woofer here. Okay. So measure from the back of the magnet to a half inch in from the back. Which oh, a half, half inch. Big. Okay, so then seven and a seven half. Seven and a half, okay. Seven and a half. So we got seven and a half by the the width, actually the width of this card is about four inches. So, so four inches is about as wide as we want our board to be because we have to be able to get it inside the box and low enough so that we can have some components on top of it. So four inches. So say four inches by, and then seven, say, seven and a half. Seven and a half? Yeah. All right, let's write that down. That's about here. So this is just a scrap of wood that I put up here because the uh, the table's so dirty because we painted everything on here. <laughs> but we can just sort of slide this over here like this and slide this over here like this. And we can see that we will easily have enough room to get everything on there on a board that size and still be able to fit that in there. So now we need a couple of boards, about four inches by seven and a half inches. So, um, what did you want to use for a board? Uh, well, let's look around. Do you have any scraps we can use? How's this board? It looks, it looks thin. This is okay. This is okay. one eighth inch high density fiber board. Any kind of scrap. We even talked briefly about maybe even using a, uh, oh, a paint painters. stir stick. Uh, a paint uh, stir. <laughs> In a pinch, yeah. you might be able to use that, but this will probably be better. We'll be able to get it a little bit bigger. So what we need to do is, because you're going to be cutting this, so we got a room here. Oh boy! <laughs> you need to. Uh, what do we say our dimensions? Okay. I feel like I almost need to apologize for all the talking here for the last few minutes. But honestly, if you're new to building a speaker, if you've never laid out a crossover before, you're probably going to have no idea how to get this thing cobbled together. So, I think the process of Eileen and I talking through how we're going to construct this thing and why we're doing it the way we are could be really helpful to a beginner. Okay. So now you have got to <laughs> <laughs> cut this with, uh, well, you are not. You don't like power tools too much. No, I've so never used any. You never yeah. use any. Well, the, let's just the set drill you up. the other day. The drill, right. But the big power tools you've never used to cut things with. So let's set you up with probably the most benign of all of them, which would be probably the saber saw. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's go cut this at the saber saw. All right, let's go. <laughs> you cut it. Not I along the line, though. <laughs> Did you see where the blade was? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't looking at the blade. You weren't looking at the blade. <laughs> well, that's the problem. You got to look at the blade. Okay. The blade is where it's actually cutting okay. and taking place. <laughs> uh, that was kind of my fault. I went over the safety stuff with her, sure, but now that Eileen knows what part of the saw to actually look at when she's cutting, yeah, she did a much nicer job on the actual crossover board. So, sorry, sweetie. Okay, so we're ready to start uh, gluing, hot gluing our crossover components to our boards that you so lovely, lovely cut out. Um, we double check they're the right size. Got a hot glue gun going, and our tweeter circuits up here, our woofer circuits basically here. Now, all of these components are fairly light. Even this coil, there's not much to it. That's pretty light. I don't have any problem just using hot glue to fasten any of this stuff, but this 3 mm Henry uh, laminate core inductor is kind of heavy. So that, I want to have a little extra security. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill a couple of holes to install a zip tie to provide some extra holding force uh, just for this inductor. The rest of them, I think it'd be fine just to use hot glue. So what we want to do is we want to position this about where it's going to be on the board. So go ahead and do that now. What we're going to do is I'm going to do this one, Eileen's going to do that one. We're going to do each thing we do side by side uh, at the same time. Yeah, it's best practice to zip tie any component with any kind of weight to it, and any kind of metal core inductor will probably weigh enough to need to secure it with more than just hot glue. The rest of the components, even the tiny air core inductor, are pretty light, so I'm okay just using the hot glue to secure them. Not my best camera work here, but Eileen is drilling the two holes she marked out so she can run the zip tie around the inductor and fasten it to the board. Eileen put a couple of beads of hot glue on the bottom of the inductor, set it in place, 
and then she fed the zip tie through the holes. And we're making sure that the locking mechanism is not on the bottom, but on the top, so that the board will sit fairly flat. That's not going anywhere. So like I said, the plan here is that I would show Eileen how and where to glue the individual parts on the crossover board on one of the boards, and she would complete the same task on her board. Now I do understand that there might be some of you who are going to cry foul on this. After all, I am doing a little bit of the work, it's true, but Eileen and I discussed this for a while before filming it, and this just seemed to be the clearest way of showing both her and you a potential first-time speaker builder, how to assemble a crossover. Now, this is not the only way to do it, of course. I mean, aside from keeping the inductors a safe distance apart, the sky's really the limit on this. Personally, I don't get fancy with my crossovers. I just want to make sure that they work. That's all. So just get it between it. As long as everything's held down pretty good. Looks pretty good. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we're getting ready to work on the crossovers. Before we start soldering the crossovers together, we need to cut some pieces of wire to the right length uh, so we can attach the, the lines that go to the woofers, tweeters, and to the binding post. So here we have the, the crossover. This crossover is gonna go inside this bottom woofer hole and set down there. Um, but we need some length of line to tie the binding post, which attached to the amplifier that binding post to the crossover to get the signal into the speaker. So I think, how much line do you think we're going to need to go from the, from the woofer to the binding post? Let's see. Well, it looks like about a foot. About a foot, yeah, because that leaves them a little bit extra. So that's good. Just measure off roughly a foot and then I guess do it twice because we got two speakers. Yeah. Now, Eileen is not super experienced cutting wires, so let's see how she does. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. So two of these? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then we've got to get a line to connect this top woofer all the way down to the crossover as well. Oh, the crossover. Yeah, I don't think that's long enough. It needs to be two or three inches longer than that, I think. Okay. Just as a guess. Okay. So how many inches is that? So that's going to be uh, 24 if you want. Okay. If it's a little too long, we can cut off. So 24, yeah. that's yeah. good. So you can use like whatever kind of whatever wire you want for this. It should be, basically it should be about 16 gauge. This happens to be 14 gauge. It's in wall wire, but it doesn't have to be that thick. The, the lower the gauge number, the thicker the wire. Uh, right. For some reason. Okay, so we've got two of those. All right, so we have the wires. Now we just need to, to strip a, uh, Cut the ends off so they're uh, separate little wires, uh, strip them down and get them ready to be able to solder to the board. Okay. Let's see, how'd you do? With these, they're all stripped. All right, good. All right, we've got all the wires stripped on the cross servers. We're ready to terminate the wires with these quick disconnect terminals. I have amassed a little collection. I bought a kit from Parts Express and I keep it in this carry box and it's very convenient. Thank you, Kevin from Texas, you know who you are. But we've already got the terminals to sort of uh, setting on the uh, speaker terminals. Now there's a couple of ways we can do this. We could do it this way. Some people just solder the wires directly to the drivers themselves. But you didn't sound like you loved soldering things an awful lot. So, and, and this, that's not usually how I do it either. To be honest with you, I usually do use these, uh, these terminals. It just makes life easy if there's a problem and you have to disconnect things. And there is sometimes an issue that has to be sorted out. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna crimp these wires onto these quick disconnect terminals. Yeah, there were a lot of firsts for Eileen during the speaker build. This, uh, for example, was the first time she had ever crimped on a quick disconnect fitting onto the end of a wire. And she did pretty good, I think. Give it a tug, see if it's on there. Yeah. It's good? Yeah, it's good. All right, good. You did it. 
Congratulations. So we're obviously not going to show the entire crossover assembly, but here's just a quick snippet of the process on just part of the woofer circuit. We've got the three millihenry coil with the laminate core here, that's here. The other end of that connects to these two caps, as well as goes to the positive terminal of both woofers. So anything that's left for the woofer circuit to be finished is the other side of these two uh, 15 microfarad caps need to get connected to the amplifier input as well as the negative terminal of the woofers, both of them. So for me, it's just basically a lot of checking, rechecking, going through the schematic from the amp side forward, then backwards from the driver on both the positive and negative sides. Just basically keep double checking what you're doing before you actually solder. This, <laughs> this is something I never thought I would ever see in my lifetime. My wife and I soldering crossover boards side by side. I did give her a quick tutorial beforehand, but you know, she did really well.